We begin with the impacts of climate change. Hawaii is looking at projected sea level rise. Now on the North Shore, we have to make tough decisions. What do we do about homes that are falling into the ocean on North Shore? Do we harden those shorelines? Or do we, do we move back coastal highways? There's a, a beach in Maui called Baldwin Beach Park. A lot of the infrastructure that was on that beach when I grew up there, um, kind of learning to surf as a kid, there was a, there was a shower, there was a lifeguard storage building where they kept their jet skis and their other equipment. Uh, there was a bathroom, a restroom, of, um, and all that stuff was, was lost to the erosion. What we see all over the island, it's all over the state that we're seeing this chronic recession of the shoreline and the loss of our, of our infrastructure and habitat. If left unchecked without any action, the, the impacts are gonna be substantial. So in 2023, the Oceanet Research Foundation received a grant and aid award from the state of Hawaii to develop a climate change toolkit. This program was a partnership between Oceanet Research Foundation and Oceanet Laboratories to build a set of skills from a science and technology aspect, team collaboration tools, and then community buildings that are needed to address climate adaptation in the state. So Montecuji Bay was selected as the site for this pilot project because it's a unique site and it's an important site uh, for the community in Pa'ia, Maui. I belong to the family of the founding minister of Pa'ia, Montecuji, Reverend Sokyo. He arrived in Hawaii in 1904. Then in 1921, after having purchased this beautiful property, the uh, present Mantokuji Temple was established in 1921. Been here for over 100 years now. An important religious spiritual place for the Japanese community early on. We still make an impact on the, the local community for Paia and Maui. In the last 12, 15 years, because of sea level rise, we've seen a lot of damage quickly, dramatic changes happening. You know, potentially the, the temple itself could be covered with the, the sea. So um, time is short and, and we have a lot of work to do. So Oceanet has been working with the Montecuji community for over six years. We came across this opportunity to do the Climate Toolkit and we figured this is the perfect site. The data shows the predictions for sea level rise are severe for Montecuji we will lose this temple structure to the ocean if nothing is done about it. In addition, the Montecuji property has a history of being mined for sand resources by the government for use in public infrastructure. Today, really, the erosion is largely contributed to the fact that there's none of sand on the beach. We were really looking for students who were passionate about the coastal issues, about climate change, and that they wanted to make a difference. And we found them. We found five excellent student ambassadors to work with as we built them up and, and worked with them to become climate change ambassadors. Well, I think growing up on Maui, for me personally, I've always really cared for the environment. Seeing the Maui fire at Lahaina really put me into like, you know, I gotta do something to help out, you know, my community. I feel some sort of wanting to do something and I wanna start to do something. There's a Japanese word for it. It's called chiri motsumore ba yama ni naru. Do a little thing, even more and more and more it will eventually become a mountain and have a huge impact. My ultimate goal is, is just to be able to help restore and sustain the health that we have on the island. I think it's super important for future generations to be able to experience the same things I have and really appreciate the land that we have around us.
The Climate Change Toolkit is three parts. The first one is the science, the engineering, the data gathering, the biology, the water quality in the bay, the actual characteristics of the sand on the beach, the topography on the ground or also in the bay, the, basically the shape of the land, the hills, the elevations, the drop-offs. Also looking at the ocean currents because the currents in the bay have an impact on the erosion. And then we're also doing monitoring together. Montecurgy is experiencing extreme erosion and sea level rise, and it's really taking a toll on their property. And it's also affecting their culture and their history. A lot of the gravesite has been lost to the water, and so just protecting that is what they're really concerned about. So being a part of the planning and the actual sampling, like sand sampling and then water quality testing, just being a part of the whole process, I've learned a lot. Learning really about just how much erosion problems we have in Hawaii especially was really eye-opening. Uh, the purpose of putting up the cameras is to provide, you know, to catch real-time data. So we have a more better prediction of what will happen in the future. With that data, we can use it to come up with solutions. So the purpose of the coconut is to track current and the water movement. Using these tools, we can um, do like mapping, where you can um, map out the uh, Montecuji Bay using tools like MATLAB, Python, ArcGIS. So our mentors have really taught us all this stuff to uh, utilize uh, to combat the uh, erosion here. Another aspect is building tools to collaborate as a team, contributing through these meetings and these discussions together, both in person and online. And then finally, uh, community building tools. It's related to building this team, but even beyond that, it's about bringing awareness about the situation of climate change in general, but also the, the hazards at uh, Montecuji specifically. And so a lot of the work that we've done together, we've shared online through social media, but then all of our ambassadors now can take this message and all of you as part of this community can take this message and, and, and share it with the community members. Tell them about Montecuji's situation, about sea level rise, about the erosion, about how it's impacting the turtles, the eevee, the graves, this historic temple, and, and spread that awareness so that our community can come together and address this, um, this issue. So my overall highlight throughout this process was just being able to work alongside other passionate and motivated interns and Oceanet team members for a Hawaii community in need. My highlights of this climate toolkit, getting being a new perspective of looking at the beach. And after joining Oceanet, that perspective get expanded a lot. Pretty much being able to work with like-minded individuals and kind of uh, work towards like a long-term goal and cohesively as a group and then also to learn directly from experts and professionals in their respective fields. Working with the, my fellow um, Ocean Ambassadors and the mentors and then especially the uh, Montecuji Mission Board. Um, they have been amazing to work with and then dedication to like preserving the uh, the cultural heritage and the environment of Montecuji Bay. Working through this fieldwork made me realize that it isn't only about land loss, it's also affecting the community's identity. Since this is their home, they've been here for a while, uh, motivating me to create like solutions. So I think one of the biggest takeaways that our students got from this program, from this pilot project, is just how much is involved in terms of climate adaptation for a community. A physical feature, land feature, or structure feature. Prioritize logging and reasoning. Well, this is the last the data source that, that uh, you can use to fill the gap. So you have to kind of do a little bit more in-depth research, look through the habitat specifications, and then see if the area you're doing a survey in actually matches that.
So I think just climate change is a really like daunting um, topic for a lot of people. They don't know where to start or they think like it'll affect them in the future and they don't have to worry about it right now. So I think just little steps, it can be as simple as just acknowledging it and spreading the word. I think just like telling our journey to the community will um, spark people to uh, do their part. It can be anything small, you know, it can be like, you know, data collecting or like, you know, putting the word out there and, you know, telling stories about the place. An end goal is to pe raise people awareness and they can do something about it, even though it's a little tiny step. It's, at least it's still forward. How they've been so resilient in the fact that they've been here for over a hundred years or came here over a hundred years ago, this they're gonna always persevere or at least try to persevere. And so I think really trying to relay their story in a way where other people can get inspired. Since this is a cultural place for the people that wanna save it, and I wanna save it too because it's something special now. I've worked here and I don't wanna see it just be gone in the future. All communities are going to need to think about their climate risks. So it is our intention with developing the pilot project at Montecuji that this framework for developing these tools can be applied to other communities in the state of Hawaii that have similar yet unique challenges with climate adaptation. And having a climate change toolkit like this and really working together to develop the science to build teams that are capable of, of addressing the problem and then to really bring the community awareness and the community knowledge into the problem so that we can really start to build a coalition. That kind of package is really what we see as being an approach to start to really implement solutions to solve a very complex and multifaceted problem. Mm -hmm.